We'll see in a few minutes while we continue our investigation into crime in Lafayette and how much of the problem here is caused by our close proximity to Chicago. In part two of our special investigation, News Channel 18's Krista Mayorano and Liz Nichols team up once again. They are live tonight in Lafayette with what they've uncovered. Kristen and Liz. Well, Gina and Jeff, while digging into this story, one common theme just kept popping up. Yeah, that's the housing issue. Now, both local police and the prosecutor's office say it's a big reason why crime filters down from Chicago to Lafayette. After doing some more investigating, it wasn't hard to see why. My little brother got shot in his back, and I have never been back up there since. For some, making the two-hour journey from Chicago to Lafayette was a no-brainer, an opportunity for a better life. It ain't for me. I need to find something better. I, I want to live my life. I want to have a family one day, so that's why I came now. I had to be in peace. For others, that choice may not have been so easy. Tippecanoe County Prosecutor Pat Harrington says thousands of Chicagoans have been displaced thanks to choices made by the city's politicians. Starting in the early 2000s, they made a decision that all their high-rise, low-income housing was going to be destroyed. They tore down these projects, but they built no new units. He says the people who lived in those high-rises were given housing vouchers, and many migrated to Lafayette. You want safe streets, good schools, strong community, and jobs. It's just that simple. And that way, Lafayette is, uh, hits a home run on that every time. There's jobs out here, so... You know, I'm trying to do something to better my life. We decided to look into this issue further. Here at the Lafayette Housing Authority, low-income families are able to receive vouchers to help pay for rent, and the office has been flooded. We have closed our waiting list uh, back in September. Uh, we have about 1,200 people who are waiting uh, to receive assistance. Executive Director Al Davis says that number compares to roughly 1,200 families who are served by the program each year. Before that waiting list closed, Davis says having a local address was a requirement to receive assistance, although he says it can be hard to verify just how long a resident had lived there after moving from somewhere else, say Chicago. Harrington and Davis both say many Chicago transplants go on to become valuable, contributing members of the community. But the draw of Lafayette doesn't come without its consequences for local law enforcement and the court system. We're in contact with Cook County probably almost every day here in some form. Our calls to Chicago Police and the Chicago Housing Authority for comment on this story were not returned. But Harrington says his experience with law enforcement up north has shed some light on the situation. I've met with Chicago police officers at some of our national conferences and they, they when I sit there and try to ask them what happened in Chicago, they're very, very blunt and open about it because they're not talking on the record to media, but we are trying to get rid of some of our worst crime areas. In fact, from Chicago's point of view, the demolition of public housing appears to be a success. A recent Chicago Housing Authority news release says crime in Chicago has diminished significantly over the past decade, and according to the study's modeling, the teardown of public housing has accelerated the decrease. It goes on to say that the relocation had no impact on criminal activity in the 74 communities residents moved to. On that point, Prosecutor Harrington would strongly disagree. I don't think anyone in 2012 can deny the existence of gangs in Tipton County and the connection with the Chicago street gangs and the pipeline of drugs going between not only Chicago but northwest Indiana. There's a sign, an invisible sign up saying, you know, Tipton County is a, the new frontier. There's no border. There's no, um, there's no gate. We can't, you know, screen you as you drive down 65 and take an exit and say, you know, what's, what's your pedigree? Uh, what, what's, what's, your, what's your history? Uh, do you have a record? Now, we do want to mention the Lafayette Housing Authority works continuously to make sure those who are getting assistance comply with their regulations. And Davis adds that many individuals getting assistance do become successful, upstanding members of the community. And we did find that news release on the Chicago Housing Authority's website pretty interesting, especially the fact that city leaders find the solution of tearing down public housing a successful way to fight crime. We've posted a link to that article in this story on WLFI.com. You can check it out right now. Reporting live in downtown Lafayette, Liz Nichols. And Kristen Mayorano, News Channel 18.